Drug deals, prostitution, gun violence. Not the kind of things you'd expect on the West Island, but street gangs have long set up shop in that area. Yeah, and tonight we begin a three-part series looking into who they are and what they're doing. Thomas Dagg has been working on the series, and Thomas, gangs are doing business on the West Island. Uh, yeah, they are, and they do a pretty good job at uh, staying hidden, and perhaps that's why uh, we've had uh, so many people uh, who spoke to us seem hesitant to admit gangs do business on the West Island. Police are careful not to glorify them, but they can't deny two things. Street gangs exist, and getting rid of them is next to impossible. The night of September 23rd, this looks like any other crime scene, but behind the police tape, a much bigger story. A 29-year-old man is dead after a shooting on the West Island. The flashing lights attracting attention to a world that exists in the shadows. The man is known as a street gang member. The victim, Jonathan Castillo, a reputed member of an established West Island street gang. A sign gangs are still doing business here three years after a major police operation. 18 men and women arrested, all suspected of gang-related activity. Police had hoped that would shut them down. Would you say gang activity has gone down since then? Not, not really gone down. They're, they're present. They're present, but it's under control. We, what's important is uh, you know, that we, we have to be out there because uh, if you're not there, they'll take the room. Castillo's murder happened near this train station in Beaconsfield. Hard to believe gangs are active around here, but they are. They're dangerous and sophisticated, and they battle for turf on the West Island. The week of Castillo's murder, his gang leader, Jonathan Clore, was sentenced to 14 years behind bars. Experts say rivals wanted to weaken Castillo and Clore's gang, but the battle isn't that simple. They just want to make money. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're just, uh, you know, their color is green. Green. <laughs> no, it's no, no, it's no longer blue or red. No, it's no, the color no, of money. No, That's no. all that, that counts now. Yes. I'm Maria Murani okay. says the traditional war, reds versus blues, is no more. Today, gangs use their colors more for marketing, a way of attracting teenagers at schools and over the internet. Part of their plan to draw in those who want to fit in. They recruit even in the Centre Jeunesse. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I, I get the feeling you get a lot of practice. I get a little bit. Matt Harrison runs programs at the Youth Center in Pierrefonds, near the corner of Sources and Pierrefonds Boulevard, right where gangs like to do business. This corner has been a hot spot for a while. So that's the McDonald's, the Tim Hortons, there's a Depaner, there's a Subway, there's a Dollarama. It's a place that's easy for everyone in this area to get to. There's a lot of buses that come into this area. There's also the Roxborough train station, which is pretty nearby. Harrison admits, despite the best efforts of youth center staff, police, and others, the allure of street gangs proves too strong for some kids in their early teens, those looking for a sense of belonging. In some situations, do you feel powerless? Definitely. I mean, like I said, once, once we close the doors, they're out in the real world again, um, and I can't do anything about it. Antonio Yanantuoni has been fighting gangs for years. He can't deny they're hard to stop out, part of a much bigger network of drugs and prostitution. They need the connection. They need other organized crime, traditional or bikers. You just don't come around and say, oh, I'm a street gang. You know, they're, it's, like, um, it's like a chess game. You know, everybody has his role. A well-entrenched system that corrupts teens and costs lives, even on the West Island, where you'd least expect it. Now, dozens of street gangs are active throughout the island of Montreal. Many of them work together. For example, some gangs of the West Island are affiliated with others uh, in Montreal North. And coming up tomorrow, uh, we'll introduce you to a former gang leader in Pierrefonds. After getting shot and spending three prison terms, uh, he's decided to turn his life around just this year. We'll have oh. him tomorrow. Well, looking forward to seeing the piece tomorrow. Thomas, thanks a lot. All right. Well, they make money off drugs and prostitution and settle the score with guns. Yesterday, we told you street gangs are alive and well on the West Island, but who are these people? Yeah, tonight, the second in our three-part series, Thomas Dagg joins us again. So, Thomas, you met someone who recently quit a street gang. Yeah, he quit after rising through the ranks over several years of a, of a gang in Pierrefonds, only mid through uh, his uh, 20s, and already he served three prison terms. But now, he swears he's put the past behind him and he's taking the high road in life. 
These aren't exactly the mean streets of the West Island, but go a little further north and the contrast is like day and night. This is Amabe, Pierrefonds street gang hub. If you ask the people who live in this neighborhood, they will tell you that there's a lot of gang members, you know? Everybody comes here to... In Amabe. Yeah, Amabe, you know? If anyone is qualified to show us around, it's Mahad al Mustakim. At 24 years old, he's lived here most of his life. He knows the neighborhood, and it knows him. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The eldest of nine kids, he felt he didn't have anyone to look up to. So as a teenager, a street gang became his family. When I showed the older guys that I had, I had boss, I have uh, the courage to do things, they, they got me quick, I got recruited quick. So, so I had a big position at, at a young age. He climbed the ranks and had 20 men follow his every word violence and drug deals became a way of life. His lifestyle caught the eye of police. He was arrested at age 15, then again and again for attempted murder, gun possession and extortion. al Mustakim served three prison terms, but police weren't the only ones after him. So were rival gangs. Yes, yeah, this street. Over here. Yeah, it happened here. He took us back to where he got shot and came within an inch of dying at age 21. One bullet in my back, the doctor said uh, he hit my spine, but he said, you, because I was, I was still running. So when I turned the curve, he started shooting, 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 one in the leg and one in the belt. So it was not my time to die, you know. Jonathan Clore later pleaded guilty for that shooting and two others targeting rival gangs on the West Island. Clore is now behind bars. He was dressed black on black. After the shooting, Al Mustakim was told he would never walk again. Today, he's taking steps to change his life. Today, what, what, do, you, what do you think about those people that are responsible for that? I forgive them. I forgive them because if you want people to forgive you, you have to forgive them, you know? Al Mustakim was born Muslim but never knew much about the religion until he was sent to prison a third time. Ask everybody on the street, they're not happy. They know they're not happy, you know? So uh, I, try, I was trying to look for something. I was trying to look for happiness, you know? And I find it in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the religion. <laughs> Al Mustakim got out of prison and turned his life around in March. For him, Islam may have replaced guns and gangs. He now uses his story to protect kids, steering them away from the lifestyle that almost took his life. And as you saw there, Al Mustakim spends time uh, talking to kids in Amabe, hoping to convince them to stay away from gangs. We followed him around as we spoke uh, to some uh, teenagers and took questions for them at a youth center in Pierrefonds. And what's encouraging, uh, his message appears to be getting through at least to some of them, and we'll show you that story tomorrow. Oh, I look forward right. to that. Good to see that he's turning his life around, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, a very, like, a very encouraging message there. All right, thanks a lot, Thomas. All right. Tonight, the third and final part in our series on West Island street gangs. Thomas Dagg joins us once again. And Thomas, one man is using his own story to protect teens. Yeah, we met Mahad al Mustakim in our story yesterday. Uh, you may recall he rose through the ranks of a street gang in Pierrefonds. Now he spends much of his time fighting street crime his own way by talking directly to kids at risk. It's just one approach to root out gangs at the source. When Mahad al Mustakim walks into this Pierrefonds Youth Center, he's taking a step back in time. He too spent evenings here when he was a kid. Now, a decade later, it's a homecoming of sorts. I see myself uh, when I was young, because they're 15, 16 years old. No? The faces may have changed, but some of the staff remains the same. The director, Anik Kankuti Kapuku, remembers al Mustakim as a good kid. He came to en 2000. Et il avait 12 ans. Donc depuis lors, j'ai connu un jeune homme très impliqué plus au niveau sportif et il chantait beaucoup. Much has changed for Al Mustakim since then. He got lured into a street gang, sold drugs, and served three prison terms. Now he's here to talk about it. Pour ceux qui me connaissent pas, je m'appelle Mahad. Al Mustakim uses his story to keep teens away from gangs. In neighborhoods like Amabe, gang leaders are always looking for new recruits and often turn to vulnerable kids. Quand vous avez un dossier criminel, ça vous bloque dans beaucoup de choses. Ça vous empêche de rentrer dans le travail que vous voulez. Vous comprenez?
The teens listen intently, barely noticing the police officer sitting right next to them. The message we have to send, just repression, I ain't going to do anything. Commander Antonio Yanantuoni says Montreal police are changing the way they fight street gangs. Federal budget cuts have put the Eclipse anti-gang squad in jeopardy. Now officers are focusing more on prevention, getting involved in the community, even organizing summer soccer tournaments for at-risk youth. But Yan Antoni says parents also have a big role to play. Kids come home, he doesn't work, he has the newest phone, he has a lot of clothes and all that. People, parents, brothers, big sisters, friends, they have to ask questions. Where does it come from, you know? Back at the youth center, an emotional moment for Al Moustakim. Staff members play a CD he recorded when he was just a teen. A reminder of better days from Al Moustakim's childhood. The innocence workers hope these teens will hold on to. They've seen too many kids take the wrong path. Ça fait mal. Mine de rien, on le voit, on s'habitue à eux, euh, on devient proche avec eux. Et quand on apprend, ça nous fait mal de dire, ah, oh, on a échoué. Al Moustakim seems to have made an impact on these kids at least. Lui a tout vécu. Tout ce que nous on aime faire, tout ce que nous on aimerait faire, cool, avoir de l'argent, ça. Je retiens que comme être dans une gang de rue, ça, ça te sert à rien. Puis comme ça, au lieu de améliorer ta vie, ça te gâche encore plus. When I, I, I took the decision to leave the street and the gangs, my goal was to help people. So uh, days like that, nights like that, I feel like I'm completed. I'm, I just complete my mission. His mission may be over for now, but it's a job with no real end in sight. Gangs still work in the shadows, but Al Mustakim hopes to convince more kids they can shine. Now, Al Mustakim recently hosted a conference at Concordia University with former gang members from the United States and Canada. It's all part of his plan to keep kids away from gangs. He's set to host another similar event in the winter, and he knows it's going to be a long process keeping these kids away from gangs. Yeah, well, this has been some uh, fascinating insight into a problem that, that really doesn't get talked about. Yeah, a lot, lot of so. people don't know about it, so if we were able to shine the light on it a bit this week, then we're happy. Thomas Dagg, thanks a lot. Well All right. What's the dangerous part is like the drugs, when you start talking about drugs, and, and, and the kids get addictive and they start doing, they lose it, you know? And, and they're trying to glorify themselves in, in crime. That's when it becomes uh, dangerous. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, like I mean, it's, it, it's very lucrative huh, to, yeah. to sell drugs, and, but people don't look at all the side effects that it brings in the cost of the community as well, you know? But the dealer, him, he only sees this pocket, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of money to be made, unfortunately, but uh, there's a lot, a lot of side effect, and people don't see it, you know. And street gangs, they're just like a tool uh, to be present, you know, like I said, they need the connection, they need other organized crime, traditional, or bikers, you just don't come around and say, oh, I'm a street gang, you know, they're, it's like... Um, it's like a chess game, you know, everybody has his role. So you have to have a, a network, you know, and and the other groups, organized crime or bikers, they, t they take advantage of these street gangs because they're more vulnerable, they can manipulate them. And, and that's why uh, parents or teachers or community people, big brother, a real friend it has to be there and notice and say, come on, don't get involved in there, they're gonna use you. And in places like this, these are new, all new buildings, sort of middle class or middle class or middle class. This isn't where you'd see street gangs. I, it, they can be present anywhere. anywhere. It's, not, it's not like uh, this area, uh, this type of housing. Or, I mean, there's no distinction. You know, there, it, it could hit, you know, uh, street gang members. Uh, it's not linked to, it could be anybody, you know. Yeah, je me présente, Mahad al Mustakim. Il me connaît sûrement la d'allergie au flic. Mais tout un changement. 
R.A.P. Rien à prouver P.D.V. Parole de vrai J'ai fait beaucoup d'erreurs J'en ai vu toutes les couleurs Dans ce game qu'est-ce que j'ai gagné Que de la haine et de la douleur Oublie mes ennemis Mes propres amis veulent me flinguer Tant que Allah est avec moi Mon cœur sera toujours blédé À 12 ans la rue je l'ai marié Aujourd'hui je l'ai divorcé Si tu me fais du mal t'inquiète mon frère Je ne veux pas riposter Excusez-moi si je vous ai vexé ou offusqué J'ai déménagé, quitté la rue pour la mousquer C'est vrai que souvent c'est dur, c'est vrai que des fois je dors mal Aujourd'hui ce n'est plus les mêmes gars qui m'appellent sur mon portable Malgré tout ce qui m'arrive, alhamdoulilah je garde le moral Parce que, in God I trust, tout ce qui m'arrive, je me dis que c'est normal J'essaie d'aider les jeunes, j'essaie de faire un peu d'awa Ma vie a complètement changé dans une prison à Ottawa Souvent, je pense à ma jeunesse et à toutes mes potentiels Et à tous mes frères en ces quatre murs qui avaient du potentiel 